He calls Peter even in his, his state when he was weak. He called Peter, but after he called him, he changed his name and called him the rock. Even though Peter had some weaknesses in him, he was still solid as a rock. And that, that's what I want you to understand, Joe. As a pastor, you got to be solid as a rock. You, you, you understand that in pastoring, you meet personalities in, in the church. And sometimes churches tend to be driven by three things. They tend to be driven by budgets. They tend to be driven by personality. And sometimes they're driven by boards. But at the end of the day, the driver in the church is the Holy Spirit. We are not driven by budget. We are not driven, amen, by boys, but we are driven by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And as a son of God, he is calling you, amen, to be that example to the flock. And what we need to understand that in standing in this sacred place, at this sacred desk, God wants us to feed the flock, not to starve the flock, not to slop the flock. Come on, help me, amen. You slop hogs, amen, not sheep, amen. You got to feed them some nutrients, amen. You got to give them some nourishment. And so often in the pulpit, we give them slop. No, we can't give them leftover. You got to give them some hard, some heavy meat, amen, some good vegetables. Because a lot of times, sheep like to nibble. Y'all help me up in here. Because a lot of us, we like to snack. We like potato chip. We like ice cream. We like cookies. We like cake. But we don't want no collard greens, amen. We don't want no chicken. We don't want no fish. We don't want no real meat. We want a snack in church. And when somebody give you a real meal, you won't even eat what's on the plate. around the grill. And one thing I know about cooking, before you can cook anything, you got to prepare it. Y'all help me. Make sure you prepare the food. Make sure you got, got a good sous chef, amen. Somebody that'll help you get it ready. Can I tell you who the sous chef is? His name is the Holy Ghost. His name is Jesus. He'll help you to prepare the meal. Now, I got notes from here, and that's all right. You need a point of reference, but every now and then, the Holy Spirit ought to be able to take control of what we do in our churches, what we do in our sermon, what we do in our program. Your sermon ought not be so tailored that you can't all the end and listen to what the Spirit of God said. And a lot of time in church, folk get mad and upset because you listen to the Spirit of God and not to what they want you to preach. Because they got itching ears. They want you to make them feel good. But every now and then, preach it. You ought to make some jokes Watch this, amen. When you consider and know your, your flock, you can tend to 
to the herd. Now here's the thing. What we have to learn how to do, you got to feed the lambs, Joe. When you feed the lamb, the lamb will grow into maturity. Because a lot of times mature sheep, they don't want to be taught nothing. They don't want to be, they don't want to, they don't want to listen to what you gotta say. But when you start training the lamb, the lambs grow into maturity. Because sometimes when we get in a place as mature folk, can't nobody tell us nothing. I don't care what anybody says. We like to say, I've been here all my life. Even when folks hurt your feelings, 
they question among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, with authority, and I, ain't, I didn't write this, y'all. Commanded he even unclean spirit. Go back. They had never seen anything like this in the meeting. Fame spread abroad throughout all the region. Round about Galilee. What spread? His doctrine. Yeah, amen. His teaching. Yeah. Nothing like it had ever been seen because those Pharisees and scribes who were supposed to be the interpreters of the law, they, 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 they would not interpret the law in such a way that the people could change. Now, I'm going to say something. Change takes time. It does. I read this article about an aircraft carrier. You know how long it takes to turn one around? It takes 22 miles in the water before it can make the turn. 22 miles before it can make a turn. Because if it turns too abruptly, it will flip over. They, they haven't balanced that way. They haven't done that way in such a way that you have to make sure that the turn takes time. And in church, I understand it takes time to turn, but I want to stick a pen in this. You the pastor today, not seven years from now, not 22 years from now. You are the pastor today. It will take time, but you are the pastor. I've heard people say, do this thing like, well, it take about 10 years for the pastor to really pastor the church. No, it don't take 10 years. No, if he's a pastor, he's the pastor. And on the 
them who are out of the way for that he himself is also, also is compassed with infirm. In other words, God calls you and I out and he wants us to have mercy on people because we too were like that. And, and can I say it that way? That's the simplest way to put it. Okay, we, we have compassion on people who are weak because there's some things that we are weak to as well. But our job is to be the example. And by reason thereof, for as for the people, so also for himself to offer sacrifice for sin. So we have to be compassionate. To be compassionate to people. Love them. Love them. Be willing. And so when we take the oversight, this refers to the pastor's responsibility. To watch over the flock. Oversight involves three particular leaders. There are areas of ministry that is leading, feeding, and heeding. That is, we got to pay attention too. We're asking the people to pay attention, but we have to pay attention as well. And I'm going to say this because it needs to be said. Sometimes it's good to listen to your